Hey everyone, so today I have another solved cold case for you. This one concerns the 1961 disappearance of a woman who wasn't found for 52 more years. Let's talk about Lucy Ann Johnson. Lucy Johnson was born Lucy Ann Carvel on October 14, 1935 in Skagway, Alaska. She lived in the cities of Bennett and Pennington for a while before moving to the Yukon community of Carcross in 1943. In 1953, she left Carcross and didn't really talk to her family much after that. In 1954, Lucy married Marvin Johnson. Shortly after getting married, the couple settled in Surrey in British Columbia, Canada. Lucy worked at a hospital for a while that year, but I couldn't find any more information about other employment for her. Marvin worked on a tugboat for a while, but I don't know how long that lasted. The couple soon welcomed two children, daughter Linda and son Daniel. Marvin reportedly had a temper and liked to drink. Linda would later say she didn't remember her father ever being violent, but that he was apparently physically abusive toward her mom. I know these details are kind of vague, I couldn't find a lot more information on it, but they will be important later. Lucy was last seen by a neighbor in September 1961, but not reported missing by Marvin until May 14, 1965. When police learned that Lucy hadn't been seen in years, they confronted Marvin, who admitted he hadn't seen his wife since 1961 either. At first, police suspected foul play. After neighbors reported seeing Marvin digging in his backyard, reportedly for a septic tank, they searched the backyard. However, they didn't find anything and were never able to gather enough evidence to charge Marvin with a crime. At some point, they took DNA from the couple's children and periodically would compare it to unidentified bodies who they thought might be Lucy, but there were never any matches. After his wife's disappearance, Marvin was reluctant to talk about her. He eventually remarried, and after the marriage, Linda and Daniel weren't allowed to talk about their mother at all. Sadly, Daniel drowned in his late teens. Linda, who had been about seven when her mother disappeared, went on to marry and had five children and ten grandchildren. She eventually came to believe that her mother was dead. By 2013, the disappearance of Lucy Ann Johnson was one of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police's oldest cold cases. On July 2, 2013, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or RCMP as I'll be calling them from now on, featured Lucy's case on their Missing of the Month series with hopes of getting new information. After this, Linda, who is now in her 50s, decided to take action on her own. Because she knew her mother was from Alaska, she took out an ad in the Yukon News. The ad included Lucy's name as well as her birth date, place of birth, and the names of her parents, Linda's grandparents. Linda also gave her email address in the ad, and it didn't take long for something to come of this. Just a couple of weeks later, a woman in Whitehorse in the Yukon got a call from her brother at work. Rhonda Glenn was told by her brother Howard that he'd seen an interesting ad in the paper. The woman who placed the ad was looking for her mother, who had the same name as their mother. At first, Rhonda assumed the woman who placed the ad was adopted and Lucy was her biological mother. She called Lucy Ann Johnson, who is now 77, and told her she'd seen a missing persons report for her in the paper. Lucy replied, I'm not missing, I'm here. Rhonda also contacted Linda and, once she realized they were involved, the RCMP on July 16th. Lucy Ann Johnson was alive and well. She had stayed in British Columbia until about 1980 before moving to the Yukon where she was found in 2013. She would remarried and had four more children and claimed she would never really been purposefully hiding. After Lucy was found, her former husband Marvin, who had died in the 1990s, was officially cleared of all charges in her disappearance. But now that her mom had been found, Linda had to deal with the aftermath. She claimed to have no hard feelings toward her mom, but hoped she would want to be a part of her life and get to know the grandchildren she had never even met. On July 18th, Linda told the Surrey Now leader, I have a lot of questions, and they're all wise, and I just hope I can be part of her life. 
Later that month, Linda got to talk to her mother on the phone for the first time in decades. At first, it was awkward. Linda didn't know what to say, and Lucy still seemed to be in shock at the whole situation. But ultimately, Linda claimed the conversation went great. In September 2013, Linda flew to Whitehorse to visit Lucy and her family. She later claimed Lucy recognized her right away because she looked so much like her half-sister, Rhonda. But parts of the visit were unpleasant. While there, Linda asked her mom point-blank why she had left. Lucy claimed Marvin was abusive and cheated on her frequently. She left and tried to take the kids, but Marvin wouldn't let her, as Linda would put it. She said that he told her to get out, and she went back to get us. But my dad said, you're not taking the kids, and that was the end of that. She never tried again after that. Rhonda said she'd also gotten the impression Lucy left because of domestic violence, but Lucy never talked about it much. During the visit, Linda also had to break the news to Lucy that her oldest son, Daniel, had died. I couldn't find many updates on the situation after this. Linda and Lucy stayed in touch, and as of October 2013, Linda was planning another visit to Whitehorse and even considering moving there. So that's all I have for you today on the disappearance of Lucy Ann Johnson. I know it was a bit of a shorter case, but this is one that has been hotly debated online, and there are obviously a lot of emotions behind it. I understand why the family might not want too much media attention on what is no doubt a very sensitive issue, but I do hope they're all doing well now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it. And for more dark content, I hope you'll consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.